Have you ever thought you replied to or sent a message, but you just can't quite recall if you did or not? Have you ever wanted to know if a person actually received a message you sent? And I'm sure we've all had someone ask us to resend a message, either because they deleted it too soon or claim they never received it at all, which usually means they can't find it, by the way. These are all common issues people who use email face, at least on occasion. And if we have a lot of mail that we work with, finding what we are looking for can be a time-consuming, if not impossible, task. But fortunately, Outlook has some features that can assist us with these types of inquiries that revolve around tracking, resending, and recalling messages. It helps if we remember two important things about Outlook. First, that Outlook itself uses email to communicate system types of messages. And second, by default, all the messages we send are saved to the sent items folder. So if we sent a message with a delivery or read receipt, we'd actually receive an email telling us that it had been read. It will actually say read, followed by a colon, and then the subject of the original email. That's going to come right into our inbox, so that makes following these types of messages very easy. For these types of messages, unless we need it for record-keeping purposes, once we read it, we can probably delete it. And I'm going to do that by just pressing the delete key on the keyboard. That, of course, moves it to the deleted items folder, but gets it out of my inbox and out of the way. The same is true for voting messages. When a person votes, their response is received in the inbox of the person who sent the original message. Their actual vote is going to be first, followed by a colon, and then the subject of the original email, just like a read receipt. That may be all very good and true, but if we have a lot of different responses we're waiting for a vote, that's going to become cumbersome. We may have to try to manage or corral, if you will, 10, 20, even 100 different responses. So there's got to be an easier way. And if we say there's got to be an easier way, there probably is. In this case, what we want to do is go to the original message. Remember, the original message is going to be found in our sent items folder. If we filed it somewhere else, that's okay. All we need to know is where the original message is. In this case, Michael sent out a voting message about company shirts a couple of weeks ago, and he wants to see what's happening with that particular message. When we find the original message, we're simply going to give it a double click. Before we do, notice that it has this wonderful little icon that tells us it is a voting message before we even open it. To open it up, we'll give it a double click. And from the ribbon in the show group, we want to choose the tracking option instead of viewing the actual message itself. If a message doesn't have any votes yet, or if a meeting has had no responses, we may not see this tracking option. It also may simply take about 15 minutes or so to display as it's being processed by Exchange Server. When we enable it, though, we get to see a lot of useful information. We see when the original message was sent, as well as all of the votes. In this case, there's only one vote, but we have a total of one large, no small, no medium, no extra large, and nobody that has said they don't want a shirt. Again, imagine how important this tally can be if we have a lot of votes coming in. Instead of trying to keep track of 100 different votes, this tally is going to tell us exactly what everybody voted. No mistakes, no guesswork, and no math. If we want to know the individual responses, we'll have a chance to see everything that was sent out, in this case, to a group called management. But because Michael is the only one who has responded, he is the only individual that shows up here. It tells us what the response was and the date and time the response was made. So not only do we get the overall tally at the top of the message, but also the chance to look at individual responses as well. We can tell who has voted, and sometimes more importantly, we can also tell who has not. If we want to go back and look at the original message text, we can go ahead and click the message option from the show group, so we can toggle back and forth between message and tracking as appropriate. What happens, though, if we need or want to resend a message? In this case, Michael sent out this shirt order message a couple of weeks ago and really hasn't had a lot of responses. He may want to resend it. We can do that by opening the message looking on the right side of the ribbon under the Move group, and choosing Actions. We'll go ahead and choose to resend this message. When we do this, it reopens the message as a brand new message, and it leaves it addressed to the same people. If at this point we wanted to add a recipient or modify the recipients, we certainly could. We can also add CC, BCC, change the subject, or change the body of the message itself. In this case, Michael might want to say, resend to let people know they should have received this before, and now he's resending it because he obviously hasn't heard back. 
If we need to resend a message, which we often do, please don't make it harder than it has to be. I've seen a lot of people trying to copy all the content and paste it into a completely new email and then having to readdress the whole thing. While that does technically work, you also have to try to recreate everything and it takes a lot of time. This is so much easier. When we get it finished, all we have to do is click send, just like it was the original message. The original message is, of course, still open in the background. Please note that we do need to have the actual message open like we do here to be able to see these options. We can't access them from the reading pane. If we're done reviewing the message, tracking it, and even resending it, we can simply go to the upper right corner, click or tap the X, and close that message down. Remember, we originally opened it from one of our mail folders or, in this case, from sent items. But what happens if we made a mistake? Have you ever talked a lot about different types of attachments in an email and then realized that you didn't include them all or maybe the wrong file? Or maybe that you had a typographical error, something that could be important like an address, or just something that could be embarrassing because you didn't type it right? Well, all of these would be cases where we might want to use another feature in Outlook called Recall the Message. Let's say that Michael wants to recall a message that he sent to Aaron and Susan about marketing info. We start exactly the same way by finding the original message we sent and double-clicking it to open it. We then go to the Move group, and from the Actions drop-down, this time we're going to choose Recall this message. What it tells us is that some recipients may have already read the message. I have bad news for you, and that is you can't just go back and take something back that somebody's already read. I like to think of kind of the old I Love Lucy episode where she's probably mailed a letter by mistake and she gets caught by the police officer walking down the sidewalk with her hand stuck in the mailbox. We don't want to be that person. And what we need to realize is that Outlook simply can't take back something that somebody has already read. So recalling is something that's only effective with Exchange Server and it's only effective if the person hasn't read it yet. Our options, however, are to either delete the unread copies that means just take it back and don't do anything else, or to delete the unread copies and replace it with a new message. For example, with one that does have the attachment or does have the typo fixed. Let's go ahead and try to delete the unread copies and replace it with a new message. We also have a check mark that will tell us if the recall succeeds or fails for each individual recipient, which can also be useful letting us know if we need to tell them that there's a problem or wrong information or if we can just know that everybody received the right information. We'll go ahead and click or tap OK. And because we said we wanted to replace the message, it opens up the original message so we can make edits. We're just going to make a small change. And since Michael is working on the weekend, what he wants them to know is that he already did review and it looks great. So he'll delete the end of the message and make this small change. Normally, I'm not sure I would recall an entire message just to do this, but it shows the functionality that we have. Usually, it's going to be because of attachments or significant typographical errors. Regardless of our motivations, once we're finished, we will click or tap Send, and that replaced message is now on its way. We once again can close out of the original message that we opened from Sent Items. Now we want to go back to our inbox. Here's one little caveat, or maybe we should just call it what it is, which is an imperfection. What we can see in the inbox is that we have two message recall receipts, one that says the recall was a failure and the other that says it was a success. Remember the criteria here is if somebody has already read the message, we can't recall it. This message was sent to two people. It was sent to Aaron and to Susan. Aaron had already read it, and that's what the first recall failure receipt is about. Susan had not read her message, so the replacement that we did, or the recall, was a success in that case. What's unfortunate is that we can't tell which one was successful and which one was not, because they both come in tagged exactly the same way. The message to Aaron and to Susan, one marked as a failure and one marked as a success. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Michael's not going to be too worried about saying, I will or I did. But this could be very important under other circumstances. So while the tool is very useful, if no one has read the message, it's really very useful. But if we get kind of this mixed bag and messages were sent to more than one person, we may still need to do a little bit of follow-up to ensure that everybody got the correct information. I guess one of the times this could be really useful is if we practice bibliotherapy. By that, I mean those of us who like to write to feel better, 
Maybe we've just been in a meeting and somebody just really made us angry, so we fire off an email telling them everything we think about them. About the time our finger comes off the send button, we go, "Uh uh-oh, maybe I better had not have said that. But guess what? The email's gone. Well, with the recall feature, we do have a quick take back if we need to. One thing we need to be aware of is it doesn't go without a trace. What it will say in the recipient's inbox is recalled and then the subject of the email. So as long as you didn't say anything bad in the subject and they say, what was that about? You can just say, oh, never mind. It wasn't anything important and you'll be okay. But that's kind of a tenuous situation. So we probably shouldn't send those types of messages to begin with. But at least it is an option with the recall feature. Outlook does provide us with those methods for allowing us to not only compose, send, and receive messages, but to manage them as part of our communications. We often need to track what has occurred with a message, be it via receipts or votes. We also may need to resend messages to the same person or perhaps to a different person. And on rare occasions, or at least we hope they're rare, we may have errors and want to replace that erroneous information with the corrected information. Be sure that you're aware that we can do all of these things. Try to have good email practices to begin with so they're not necessary, but certainly tracking information is part of what Outlook is designed to do. And the rest of these are just there for our convenience on the rare occasion that we do need them.